history might just be made in the U.S. The Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden has named Kamala Harris to be his running mate, the first black woman and South Asian American in the role. Once arrival for the top job, the California senator of Indian Jamaican heritage had long been considered the front runner for the number two slot. The former California attorney general has been urging police reforms amid nationwide anti-racism protests. Joe Biden has selected Kamala Harris to be his running mate, elevating a charismatic blue state senator, former prosecutor and one-time 2020 primary rival who has built a reputation as an unyielding antagonist of the Trump administration. Harris, the daughter of immigrants from Jamaica and India, was the wire-to-wire -wire frontrunner for Biden's number two job. Her experience as a battle-tested presidential candidate her efforts at leading major law enforcement offices and her political track record of three election wins in California helped her overcome a crowded list of contenders. The former U.S. Vice President campaign team has announced that Mr. Biden and Ms. Harris will deliver remarks in Wilmington, Delaware on Wednesday afternoon on working together to restore the soul of the nation and fight for working families to move the country forward. In March, Biden pledged to name a woman on the ticket. He had faced mounting calls to pick a black woman in recent months as the nation was convulsed by social unrest over police brutality against African Americans, a key voting bloc to the Democratic Party. But the pain of the people of America, witnessing what we have witnessed since the founding of this country, which is that the, the black lives have not been taken seriously as being fully human and deserving of dignity. Biden will face President Donald Trump in the election on 3rd November. But with Biden turning 78 in November, he would be by far the oldest person to be sworn in as president, making the potential necessity for Harris to stand in as president more likely than usual. Only two other women have been nominated as vice presidential candidates for a major party. A woman of color has never been appointed to a presidential ticket by either of the two main American political parties. No woman has won the U.S. presidency either. Let's now talk matters business. Local textile makers are urging the government not to relax the ban on importation of second-hand clothes to protect local industries. The government imposed the ban in March as a precautionary measure to prevent the spread of coronavirus. Sales in second-hand clothes and footwear has gone up by 40% since March this year, according to Leather Apex Society of Kenya. Kenya's main source of imports for second-hand clothes and shoes have traditionally been the U.S., U.K. and China, countries with high cases of coronavirus. This has seen the Kenya Bureau of Standards impose a partial ban on the imports of second-hand items from these countries for fears of infection. The uptake of locally made products has also been boosted by the Buy Kenya Build Kenya campaign spearheaded by the government and the private sector. The government really needs to uh, support the local industry, to buy from the local industry, and to control uh, smuggling and mitumba. The ban has been met with harsh opposition from the United States, where the Secondary Materials and Recycled Textile Association has written to the U.S. government to compel Kenya to lift the ban. Last month, Trade Cabinet Secretary Betty Maina said the issue of second-hand imports was one of the items being discussed in the ongoing trade talks between Kenya and the United States. They are willing to develop protocols on how they can conduct this trade uh, in the context uh, of the pandemics and once that is reviewed uh, by the Ministry of Health teams and our teams and other relevant competent authorities in Kenya will be able to provide uh, greater guidance. According to Kilifi-based footwear maker Umoja Rubber Products, local companies have been forced to upscale their production to meet the rising demand of locally made products. In Kenya, we have the capacity to make clothes. We have the capacity to make shoes. You have seen a very good example when, uh, when Corona came. There was a demand for masks. There was a demand for gumboots. There was a demand for safety wear. Within one week, all these things were being produced in Kenya. 
The company's chief, Jinal Shah, says to beat the COVID pandemic, companies have also been forced to innovate to stay afloat. The 2020 Economic Survey report shows that Kenyan traders imported second-hand clothes worth 17 billion shillings in 2019, a 5% increase from 16 billion shillings in 2018. O'Brien Kiman for Business, Lunchtime News. Thank you, O'Brien, for that report. Now some good news for farmers. Over 70,000 maize growing smallholder farmers spread across 22 counties are set to benefit from a 13,000 metric tons of fertilizer donation under the Action Africa Initiative by Yara International. According to the regional chief, Vitali Swafula, the farmers will receive planting and top dressing fertilizer to cover one acre of maize production for the short planting season. Now, Kenya plans to import 2 million bags of white maize for human consumption and an additional 2 million bags of yellow maize for animal feed. This was a result of, in among others, COVID-19 disruptions, the locust invasion, as well as a high cost of farm inputs such as fertilizer. We are like 113 years ago when the pandemic crisis struck in March, Yara took the decision and committed $25 million to provide food and more than one million people to more than one million people in the southern and eastern uh, African uh, countries. Under the Action Africa initiative by Yara International, over 70,000 maize growing smallholder farmers spread across 22 counties are to receive high quality fertilizers with zinc for improved nutrition. In the lower eastern, we will be rolling out in Machakos, in Makweni, and Kitui. And finally, in the lower coast, we will be in uh, Taita Taveta County and Tana River. According to Regional Chief Vitalis Wafula, the move is geared at boosting output, especially during this short planting season. Each farmer is to receive planting and top dressing fertilizer to cover one acre and a maize. Regina Manyara reporting for Channel One Business. And attempts by employees of Fresh Dairy in Gedunguri in Kiambu County to have a meeting with the farm's management have disintegrated after they were locked out of a meeting which sought to address their grievances. The workers are demanding for a pay, a pay rise and improved working conditions which they term unbearable. The employees of the dairy processor who are more than 100 in number were left in disbelief after they were locked out of the meeting scheduled for Wednesday morning. Drama ensued thereafter as security officers manning the fresher dairy premises engaged the disgruntled employees in a running battle. Ups. Our meeting yesterday, we wanted them to address us. They told us that we will be here at 8. Right now, they came, they got in, in, inside the plant. They are not talking to us. They are saying that they are not they are not going to talk to us. Now they've called the police. The workers say despite working for 16 hours, the management has been reluctant to increase their pay from 367 shillings to 800 shillings per day. You have been overworked in this company. If you don't go overworking people, it's overworking staffs and other paying staffs. Even the huko. India sana unatokea saa moja. Sana ni amchana unatokea saa moja asubuikesho. And you expect to report on the other, the other next day. Attempts to reach the management were, however, futile. Elsewhere, at least 50 French beans farmers in Laikipia County are staring at losses in excess of 60 million shillings after their produce was rejected by the United Kingdom due to contamination from chemicals used in the farms. The contract farmers under the Kenya Horticulture Export Caucus are now urging the Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Service to speed up the audit to clear their produce for export. Ups. Jason Mungai, who represents the farmers, say KHE issued them with a contract where they are required to sell all their crop yield at an agreed price of 60 shillings per kilogram. And on some international business news, South Africa's manufacturing output fell by 16.3% in June as the nationwide lockdown and the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic continue to suppress economic activity. In Egypt, the annual core inflation rate reached 0.7% in July, down from 1% in June, according to Central Bank of Egypt. More in our Africa Business News.
According to Statistics South Africa, the output of iron and steel, food and beverages, and motor vehicles suffered the largest drops when compared to June 2019. This indicates that factories are slowly upping their production as they try to return to 2019 levels, but have not reached last year's levels yet. Seasonally adjusted manufacturing production, meanwhile decreased by 30.2% in the second quarter of 2020, compared with the first quarter of 2020, Statistics South Africa said. All 10 manufacturing divisions reported negative growth rates, while the decrease was larger than any month between January 2015 and December 2019. It was still lower than April and May this year, when factory output slumped by 49.3% and 32.4%. In Egypt, the annual core inflation rate reached 0.7% in July, down from 1% in June, according to Central Bank of Egypt. Egypt's annual consumer price inflation recorded 4.6% in July 2020, compared to 7.8% in June 2020, state statistics body said. The consumer price index in Egypt has recorded a negative monthly rate of 0.1% in July compared to negative 0.3% for the same month last year. On a monthly basis, inflation recorded 108 points in July 2020, marking an increase of 0.2% compared to June 2020. Elsewhere, Middle East budget airline Air Arabia swung to a second quarter loss of 46 million US dollars after passenger traffic collapsed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The United Arab Emirates airline carried 80,000 passengers in April to June period, according to a statement from the firm. That compared with 2.6 million passengers in the same quarter last year, when it made a profit of 220 million dirhams. Air Arabia, which operates from hubs in the UAE, Egypt and Morocco, said it made 120 million dirhams in revenue. That compared with 1.14 billion dirhams in the same quarter last year. It's now time for us to focus on the sports news. Wolves manager Nuno Espirito Santo says the club needs to sign more players to make their squad stronger after their Europa League quarterfinal defeat by Sevilla last night. Wolves will not be in Europe next season after finishing seventh in the Premier League. Wolves' Europa League dream came to a heartbreaking end as Sevilla booked a semi-final against Manchester United on Sunday with a late winner in Duisburg. Nuno Espirito Santos' side had a glorious 13th minute chance to take the lead, but Raul Jimenez's penalty was saved. They struggled to create chances after that and failed to hold on for extra time. As Lucas Ocampos' header from Eva Banega's cross settled the tie for Sevilla with two minutes to go. Five-time winners Sevilla, who are unbeaten in 19 games in all competitions, will face Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Manchester United in Dusseldorf on Sunday. Meanwhile, Shakhtar Donetsk cruised past FC Basel to book a semi-final with Inter Milan. The Ukrainian side raced into the lead through Junior Moraes before Tyson doubled their lead. Alan Patrick scored a third from the penalty spot after Tyson was fouled and Dodo added a fourth before Ricky Van Wolfswinkel hit a late consolation. Shakhtar will face Inter in Dusseldorf on Monday. And I'm being informed by our sound man, Antonio Kumu, that it's Sevilla, not Sevilla. We are learning when it comes to sports. But now moving on, Kylian Mbappe could return for Paris Saint-Germain in their Champions League quarterfinal with Atlanta in Lisbon tonight. The Frenchman has recovered from an ankle injury and head coach Thomas Tuchel says Mbappe will feature if nothing extraordinary happens. The French champions have not reached the semi-finals of Europa's elite club competition since the Qatari takeover almost a decade ago.
right, we've come to the end of our broadcast. Thank you so much once again for creating time for us this particular afternoon as we sought to inform you on what is happening in Kenya and beyond. Remember, we're still working on quite a number of stories for you. You can link up with us on social media at KBC Channel 1 for regular updates on what is happening near you and far away from where you are. My name is Safin Aching Oma, and we'll be wrapping up right now. Have a lovely afternoon. <laughs>